On oh, YouTube? Yeah, okay, let me go. I need to make sure I start. One, two, you are live. Okay. Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. This is the 13th session of the joint program from the Mapleton and Baker Library. And so uh, we will have the last session on May the 3rd, I believe. After that, we will have another series of the new um, topic, that's the Shumuasari painting, starting from, actually starting from this uh, Saturday. So if anyone is interested, uh, please uh, register. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is Henry. Okay. Uh, oh, the member, sorry. I also want to remind <laughs> that uh, this program is being recorded, so that if you don't want to be visible or heard, so turn off your camera video camera and if you want to be hiding your name or changing into a different way go ahead thank you very much yes henry thank you Yonle. i'm very uh, honored to continue um, with uh, the library uh, on a new series uh, uh, in, in as a matter of fact i will consider the fusion uh, watercolor cast also a kind of uh, a chinese style uh, fusion or shumasuri, um, that's the French word for Chinese uh, style, right? Uh, with Chinese element. Uh, as you can see in this uh, uh, calendar. So we have two, uh, three more classes to go uh, besides the, the two. I think the last class we only have like a partial, we have to review. But if we have time, we will do this landscape as well. This is the preface page. And then we did all the, uh, the months. We, we're now at um, to the 11th month, or the November, uh, which, is, which is this one. Um, OK, let me, let me find the, the handout here. It's lesson 13, OK. 13. So you can see my. Uh, uh, the prompt I received from the client, the, the, the bank uh, design team, and uh, uh, then I developed uh, with the uh, uh, with all the <coughs> uh, feedbacks and requests. Uh, I uh, I changed it to watercolor from uh, uh, Chinese, uh, more of a uh, uh, Chinese. Uh, painting like this uh, snow uh, scenery that uh, was de first developed. Uh, so this draft they did uh, request uh, a raining tiger in the uh, snow first snow maybe uh, field. Um, see through the bamboo stalks. Uh, however, because the uh, the rule that we cannot paint the whole tiger so uh, we have to hide it and i found uh, in my research the uh, camouflage the colors the skin color the fur color of uh, orange actually in the eyes of the prey the the pandas or the bears or the i mean the the deers uh, in the eyes of other animals uh, it actually appear as green because they are colorblind to red and uh, yellow, right? Am I right? So you can read the article that published uh, uh, three years ago, I think, uh, in UK uh, by a scientist. Uh, he did this computer simulation of uh, the what in the eyes of uh, the deer, uh, and what's in, uh, in human eyes. This uh, uh, orange color. So um, this yeah th this was the the original uh, I, uh, the snap sl uh, snapshot I I took uh, from my phone and then uh, the uh, corrected color or edited uh, in the final production. Uh, so this is this is the the actual calendar right. Um, the the challenge is uh, how to preserve. Uh, the um, light uh, leaves against a, a dark green background um, 
because in Chinese brush painting, we we're, we're very good at uh, uh, painting the bamboo uh, positively, you know, with the uh, calligraphy brush strokes, you know. But uh, uh, on artist paper that the, I, I I've been using for for the final production, um, it it's not uh, uh, not easy uh, to. Uh, to make it water resist, like we could use a, um, a liquid called a, a transparent white or alum, uh, of, uh, that kind of uh, uh, water resist to paint on rice paper, and then you wash the back of the rice paper, it will show the, the light. We have done that before in, in previous class, right? if you recall um, the orchid, I believe. Or some other class. I, I have uh, the paper in my uh, mind. You, you know, if I do this uh, with that message, I would do this. Uh, just paint with a, a transparent ink, uh, and then uh, after it dries, it requires time uh, to to. You cannot uh, heat dry it, uh, heat set it. You have to uh, wait for overnight. Uh, then you paint the uh, wash the back side of the rice paper. It to reveal reveal the the uh, white because the that that white part it can still be painted it's like sized so uh, you can still uh, paint on the front uh, with transparent color so that that's the way I would do with the uh, rice paper. Uh, speaking of uh, shimmery, uh, I I have uh, I've mentioned in the, in the supplies list uh, another. Um, authentic material for for that is uh, called uh, 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 silk. You can you, you can just generally call it silk uh, or juan. It's a, it's a very fine silk, um, very thin you know silk. But uh, this particular product is a modern uh, version of the ancient uh, uh, material. Juan or, or uh, painting silk. Uh, it's backed with a very thin layer of uh, paper, presumably right here. But this uh, surface is the size, so it's not penetrated through. Uh, so this would be the best, as many shinovarzi artists uh, in the world um, using this. Uh, you know, painting on, on silk surface, uh, you can use hot press. Uh, so this this paper would be too uh, rough for shimmery. But as you can see, you know there are a lot of uh, um, uh, how do you call this? Uh, dry brush texture that we don't really like uh, in shimmery. So if you want a very smooth effect, uh, we can use silk. Then I just did this before. The class before this class uh, uh, during Victoria's uh, calligraphy lesson actually on this uh, silk because the the silk comes with different colors you know, white gold or this is uh, called a uh, silver but it's pretty white so I I I did this one on the silk I know many people are curious about painting on silk so uh, for in this class I'm going to try this and uh, you can. Uh, use uh, hot press or cold press, whatever watercolor paper, because those are basically sized paper. Ch uh, the watercolor paper could be used for this uh, lesson. So um, another advantage of using silk is just like a uh, you know uh, a sturdy paper, like a, a watercolor paper, that you can use uh, uh, gum or masking fluid. It's a it's a like a rubber uh, fluid. Uh, it dries to um, to a uh, waterproof. Then, uh, I, if I just continue this test, you will see. I think I, I already applied this on this, and this is my first time I'm using this. Yeah, I cannot see my zoom. Okay, now you can see. Right? Okay, uh, see the very um, because they colored it into like a light bluish color. If I uh, rub it off, it will reveal what's underneath. Actually, I did it already um, on top of the light 
tense, the yellow, yellowish green. Uh, but if I now apply a, a darker green, for example, where's my color? And then I, I uh, after that dries, I remove the, the rubber. It will show. So, so this is the uh, conventional um, tip, the uh, trick, trick uh, the Western artist always use on um, watercolor paper, which unfortunately cannot be used on rice paper or mobile paper. Because the paper is too vulnerable. If you put a rubber uh, masking fluid on top, you will never remove without tearing uh, the surface. So uh, let's say if I just wash the whole area like this, Okay, the the there's some uh, something you want to uh, pay attention when you paint on silk, because it's size silk, just uh, like a uh, uh, sized hot pair pressed paper. If you have a puddle, you will see this kind of uh, bubbles. So uh, for for chivalry artist or Oriental uh, gombi painting or uh, watercolor style. We will use another brush, another brush uh, with clean water only. This is colored. This this brush is uh, with color, and this brush is like a sponge. It, what what it does, it, it will it will take away the extra uh, moisture. So you paint only partial uh, partially uh, that area, and then you uh, this brush is wet, completely loaded. It, it, it delivers the, the paint and this one spread out pull the paints to the uh, edge and then lift it so it will take you, you, you use a tissue paper constantly uh, clean this brush and keep it damp but not wet uh, the principle is this if you want something uh, very smooth on silk or on hot press paper on computer paper for example to avoid uh, puddling, you want to have this brush serve as a sponge, uh, which is dry. So water goes to this brush. If this brush is too much water, too much water, it will create a blossom instead. So it will run into the uh, the color. Will not make it smooth. So you 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 kind of uh, spread it out to the edge. <laughs> soften the edge, soften the edge, so you have a gradual transition. So everything is under control. Um, it's not like one brush deal on raw paper or on unsized paper, right? On silk, you can move pens around with the Western color because it, it's gum Arabic. You will melt um, with water after you uh, after it dries. You can still uh, lift it so it's a uh, very uh, lenient uh, you know toler tolerant right you can you can uh, it's not uh, I mean more forgiving for forgiving than um, unsized paper I know many uh, many artists uh, Western artists they prefer sized shawn or sized watercolor for this reason that similar to uh, what they used to, the watercolor paper. Okay, so this is a little bit, uh, uh, it's, you know, same principle like a paint, um, very thin, layer by layer, it applies to paper, to size the shawn, sized rice paper, um, or mature, uh, mature uh, paper as well. Um, okay. So I'm going to experiment. I never done this before, so I just uh, want to prepare a little bit because the bamboo is very, um, very eastern, and uh, I think it's good time to to experiment. And maybe for backup, we, we can, if we have time, we, we can also do.
do this uh, uh, on regular watercolor paper. I think you probably uh, know how to do that. You, you, you're masking it uh, and then watch the whole background. Of course, you have to draw the layout first. Uh, but with the uh, uh, with the rice paper or silk, I can uh, I can do this. I just put the, the silk on top of the master or design or the template and uh, uh, and trace it with a pencil. Okay. And if you um, if you use uh, regular watercolor, you you have to. Um, Use the tracing paper first, and then use a, you can use a copy a like carbon carbon paper like this. I, I've been using it like that. So uh, let, let, let's let's do this the common way. Maybe most people. Uh, I just create a template first with a pencil. Okay, you can use. A, I just use a pencil. So why draw this? I explained the, the, the composition here. So this branch, very important, is uh, it's against the white background to divide this negative space. Otherwise, uh, it will be uh, uh, boring. So you want to create some uh, uneven Sorry, can you move the tape paper a little bit so we could see the edge of where you were drawing? Okay. We're missing the left hand edge. You have more on your right hand. Thank you. Yes. Um, there was another question also. Can people, instead of using silk, use a different kind of fabric? Is uh, there any other fabric, smooth no, and non absorbent like? The polyester, the or can, cotton, I, or uh -huh. anything else. I think the, the texture is is very fine. I don't think you can find anything. Uh, I I I've, I've done cotton sheeting like a, uh, uh, it's very close to, just like Arabic uh, cotton sheeting. You know what I mean? Like a, those, uh, uh, very basic cotton. Uh, that's absorbent though polyester I, yeah, I've done all kind of fabric on uh, clothing browsing uh, ladies uh, dress some kind of thing so you, you can experiment but I uh, I don't have any particular suggestion or recommendation for that uh, I know artists uh, like my friend in, uh, in South America whose name uh, Mary uh, what's called Mary Susan Mary, uh, she she used uh, polyester or some kind of a silk um, alternative to to silk, but it's still alternative to silk. The silk is still you know just like uh, what you will wear with uh, you know silk. It it's so fine and so uh, delicate. It cannot be and the absorbency you know everything. It's just right. So I personally I don't have any. Uh, Suggestion, but uh, I think it's worth trying. I, I know there are uh, artists out there uh, depending on many kind of fabric, so that's uh, possible. Yeah, I, I also use uh, uh, polyester or kind of uh, actually, it's modern silk, um, looks like a very heavy silk in, on fabrics.com. It, it's very expensive though. Uh, in, in place of uh, uh, the uh, decorative, like a curtain, curtain material, they're very heavy for for what for for mounting. So um, my my mounting uh, master used that for screw mounting. It is beautiful. So not necessary uh, classic silk. Could be heavy silk. It has kind of uh, stringing fiber, some almost like, that, but not. Uh, Random, but more uh, in one direction, like horizontal. Very beautiful, different colors, all the kind of uh, nice colors. So, fabric is really um, very fascinating work. So, next class, I'm sh actually will show you how to make a pattern and create your own uh, cloth, uh, class, a wallpaper. 
in Shinova, Shinova Ziri, Shinova Ziri uh, style. Thank you, Henry. There's another question. Someone wants to see the gum arabic that you use on sized shrimp paper. Oh, I they want to know the brand name and where to get it. Okay, I don't use gum arabic. It's a drawing gum or masking fluid. It's not uh, cannot be applied to rice paper. Unfortunately, it, I, I think it can be used on silk. But this is my first test. I I I I I I'll see if if it uh, tail. I I think it, because the silk is very sturdy, so you can rub it off without just like a paper, you know. I rub it off. See see it come off without making fuss, uh, you know, tearing the surface. Right? You see this this gum come off just like a rubber that's that's the uh, drawing gum but different name it's masking through it uh, yeah, there's little words maybe I don't know liquid uh, um Henry the yeah. person clarified it's the white bottle that's oh. lying on the table next to the painting oh this one this one is a white uh, this is just squash I have the transparent uh, ink that's my own brand. Oh, actually, not, not my own brand, but uh, we carry it on um, Blue Heron Art. Uh, it's called Da Sen. Uh, da Sen is the, uh, the name. But uh, the Chinese name is transparent, uh, Ming Bai Mo. Uh, English translation is uh, transparent white ink. If you search this keyword on Blue Heron Arts, uh, on Google, you'll find it. Okay. So this is the uh, size that can be used on rice paper. Uh, I can show you right now the, the way to do it. Okay, so uh, this, this is a successful. I'm going to use this on, on silk, um, but I cannot use the gum on rice paper. You know the reason, right? If you rub this, this would be, this, this paper is too uh, vulnerable to that. But you can see silk is so uh, sleek. Uh, what do you call this? <laughs> Very sturdy, so you can you, you can do that uh, to protect the color behind when you. So I just did this area with a, a, a dark green, and I revealed um, the light. I preserved the, the light yellow here successfully. So this is a very successful test. I, I, I think we can even just finish this painting if we don't have time. Uh, that would be good enough, I think instead of doing a full size painting. But I, I will show you how to use uh, rice paper since most of uh, you are interested in this maybe from my uh, uh, Chinese painting class maybe. So um, I, I don't even bother use a palette because I want to use four strands to create the, uh, the only thing is the time, the only enemy is the time. So I need to wait this completely dry. Maybe I put it against the light here maybe with some uh, uh, dry air or something that can uh, preserve I mean to uh, create a better resist if you dry it with uh, like an iron or heat or, or uh, uh, air, air uh, like a hair dryer you, you might not work because the, the instruction uh, says the best is for best result to uh, wait it dry uh, I think I should shake it, but I don't see any deposit or uh, I, I just put it here. I think it, I just like stir it. Okay, but my brush must be very clean so I don't uh, have to. Let me do this. I put a little bit yellow so you can actually see it. Uh, I can see it so instead of uh, uh, so no water, just 100%. Uh, transparent transparent white it, it has white stuff in it you know, when it's dry that that blocks the that change the absorbency of the rice paper here here so i just use this as water to um, create a light lemon color lemon yellow color okay and i can change it to green easily this is what i do i just paint like this, uh, 
just like a brush painting, you know, created. I just paint bamboo like this. I don't have to do, follow exactly, but I, I just go with the pattern. The three stroke pattern or five, you know, this uh, we learn from classical masters or uh, teaching book like a uh, master. So um, concentrate on the the group that shows the most. Because this color is um, not no longer uh, white, right? It it has it has color in it, light color, light yellow in it. But it's, it's still um, is a size is a is a water resist. So when it dry, it will block. It will change the absorbency um, more than water. <laughs> you know. I think if you use pure, pure uh, yellow, it might create some kind of resist, but uh, not as strong as uh, as this. I think. Henry, oh, yeah. Someone asked if the silk painting that you show us now was the real silk or it's the fake man-made silk. Uh, that's a very tricky question. Um, I have no answer because uh, on the description, you know, some uh, it's it's a Japanese um, contemporary Japanese technology, just like uh, they they do with uh, you know shikishi board or something, you know, with uh, rice paper. They 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 backed this silk with uh, paper, so I can no, no longer tell. Just like uh, also the Japanese silk, it's a uh, um, wrinkle-free silk so it must be something different than the string of nat natural string of uh, silks uh, silk worm so um, I would say it's a secondary maybe production of the, the silk or something it, it could be synthetic it could be synthetic but uh, I'm not sure um, but I've, I've seen description of the sailor in, in uh, China on, on the website they, they said this is true silk um, I I happen to have a um, complaint from a artist who is in Australia yesterday, and then part of the reason is this is a response to her question. She said this is not a silk; uh, it's only you know a paper with silk surface. The same thing actually is, uh, as uh, what you call the ca uh, canvas paper, right? So you have the canvas texture, looks like a, a cloth. Uh, like a hemp uh, or what, what, what do you make for uh, linen or something for oil right and they have uh, this kind of ca uh, canvas paper it's a silk paper so um, I, I, I I have no idea what, what it, if it, this has to do with silk but it feels and looks like silk it's shiny like silk um, it's very expensive like silk it's a, you know like a, in this like a A4 size, it costs two pounds in UK. Um, UK is the the home uh, of uh, Shinawatra, one of the center of uh, Shinawatra painters, um, besides uh, France. Okay, um, so they use it for for this kind of uh, painting. Um, I mean the modern product is more convenient. It's easy to uh, stretch. You know, I did put the uh, this silk because it's too thin like this. I cannot uh, flatten it. It it will not uh, wobbling, but uh, still it will it's curved, right? So I I put it on a piece of uh, backing paper with silicone with silicone. So I'll show you the process if you want. Uh, you can also put mount it on. Um, regular watercolor paper, you will waste uh, that paper. But you can use mixed media paper, and uh, um, you can also just uh, stretch. You know, just uh, stretch with the tape if you don't want to mount it. Okay, so that's uh, it's all optional. And uh, good question. That yeah, that that's a very good question. I. 
Henry, you are painting on the front of yes. the mulberry paper right now, correct? Right, right, right. That's very important. Front. That's very important. The color goes on the back for best result to to um, reveal the the brush the resist. Okay, so I I just paint on the front. I think my paper is a little bit squish. Uh, anyway, I can trim that off. So this is mostly this concept would be more technical. I think even we cannot finish, but I want to experiment with this. Uh, but you can see because I I it's so absorbent, so some areas blurred. I have to I have to clean this uh, print and uh, maybe. That's not really good. So you have, just like a painting, you have to control the shape of the uh, the stroke. Otherwise, it would be a blurry stroke. Just so this, I'll just make it a little bit sharp on the edge. So even some blobs here, I should have some good ones. Okay. So we'll just leave it dry. Now um, let's do another. So we we just put this silk. It's not big enough, but uh, it should be fine. We can we can just go this way. I think we can just do this. We can have the tiger. The tiger is uh, is hidden anyway. So we can cut off the bottom. I think. Or well, we just do halfway like that, and uh, <coughs> okay. There's some um, use a piece of tape. I'll just uh, hold it like this. I think that be fine. Um, there's a tip that if you use a good brush, I use a synthetic brush. We do have synthetic hair brush, which is. Uh, a little bit tougher. I think I, it's, it's dried up on this. Um, another tip: you can you can avoid damage the brush. I think I still ha I still have some residual for some reason. I did that earlier with that uh, first test on this one. Um, I will put a little soap to uh, pre to protect the bristle before I touch the rubber liquid. Okay, let me get a piece of soap here. Just a hand soap. Uh, okay, let me just... Uh, you, you, you don't want to have it too much, uh, with too much water, but uh, you, can, you can rub it. You can, Maybe dry a little bit so it's not so uh, soaked in water. So it has a slippery surface. That's all. <coughs> and shake this. Well, I already did. And just uh, dip it. Oops, it's got some nuns there. It's pretty messy. I don't like this actually. Most professional masters I know they don't like this, but it works. But serve the purpose. Okay, and to do this, uh, okay. this this paper already has some color. Actually, should I use a white one? I'm not sure. Okay, I don't want to trace. Maybe I just uh, uh, <coughs> put this as a reference because this this composition is really. Not so complicated. So here, here, here's the uh, the silk I already mounted on a piece of um, uh, backing paper or uh, mixed media paper, actually. Okay. So this is the the, the paper. So. Um, the surface with the silk is what we paint on, not the mix. Although I can also use the paper side, and uh, my client in Australia thought the paper is the side 
to work on. That's a mistake because she never did uh, uh, watercolor on silk. No, it's the the, the first uh, demo, maybe in the world, to do watercolor on silk on YouTube. Okay. Henry. Yeah. I was not paying attention just now. Uh, during that moment, you dip your brush into something. What okay. was that? Somebody was asking. Okay. What white liquid? This is a. This is the drawing gum, or the more common name is the uh, masking fluid. Masking fluid. Mask masking fluid. It 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 protected the what's underneath, which is the unpainted uh, silk. Okay, it will dry to a rubber surface, um, and then you you wash the background. Uh, with uh, it, you don't have to worry about you know the, the white to, to save the the um, okay let me just draw a quick a quick um, kind of uh, guideline okay the composition uh, the, the number one row is no parallel no parallel lines in this painting so um, but don't worry about that yet when, when we do this. Um, so you, you, you want to create some, uh, just like those leaves behind me, look at the, uh, the background image uh, in my little, little uh, thumbnail and you see. So I have to paint fast, otherwise it will dry on me. But we, we, can, we can make it, uh, the stroke a little big bigger maybe you know just like a calligraphic uh, painting uh, although there is no uh, no branch but you better you better draw something like that so it's a bending branch just like the picture behind me you know there's a, something like this so it it it, it has an underlying structure it goes not not you know in the air, but uh, uh, on kind of bamboo branch. Okay, this dries so fast that I have to keep it uh, cut all the time. <clears throat> and I try to. I I do use a good brush, a brand new brush. Um, some. Artist who will say never use a good brush. It's not a most expensive brush. It's a synthetic brush. I use it for oil painting also. It's a okay. So just some group of uh, you know the bamboo, the three stroke pattern. You overlap them somehow. You press and lift to create the sharp tip. That's a bamboo. There's a bamboo leaf is very common subject matter in the Xinwazi or the classic Chinese uh, painting. Right? Bamboo is very important. But in this case, uh, just like Xinwazi style painting, they do not use ink. They do not use ink. That's a common uh, requirement as we have in this class, fusion, fusion watercolor class um, project that we did with the calendar, no ink. So that's why I use this liquid. <coughs> it's colorless. Then uh, I wash the background to preserve the white when it's dry I would uh, yeah after it dries to lift it and then I would glaze some kind of uh, uh, yellow to color it uh, okay and you know you can still uh, have different uh, um, thickness of this just like uh, the liquid on, on the, um, the, the, the this ink if you use uh, like if you paint very slowly, it absorbs salary. Or this in this case, it has built up on the paper on the paper on the silk. 
it will block more. If you have like some skipping dry brush, it will block maybe, you know, uh, have some 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 penetrate color through, so, but, but not completely blocking the, the ink. That's what I want. Actually, I just want this group, maybe the most contrast area to be fully opaque or fully um, masked, masked. Mask, right? Okay, and I have to clean this brush before it dry. Otherwise, this brush is ruined. Okay, but it's it's already <laughs> already bad shape. I don't know what to do. It just uh, has a you know, so, uh, but you know maybe I just use this brush for this uh, purpose. You can see the residual becomes a rubber as soon as it. it cools down or something like that and when you pull this out it, some some bristle will be damaged so this is a lesson to show you never use your good brush with the masking through it you will ruin it okay you can use like a one dollar brush you know something like that and you, you just one time deal that that's fine but uh, uh, if this painting sells you know this brush cost maybe ten dollar you know that's Okay, we can still use it, by the way. So I'll keep it for that for this purpose only. But you can see I cannot move this. Even I had the uh, soap, it still does this because this bottom, this heel part, is still damaged. That's very common. Okay, um, wait this to dry. Wait this to dry before uh, wash. Okay, and I think you can use a hair hair dryer. Like. Okay, um, it's not completely dry yet. Let me see this one. We can still uh, experiment on this one because this one um, is like a, a, a testing. Well, I can also use uh, some uh, other little scrapping piece to, to test the colors. I think it's very good practice to have small pieces like you know I, when I cut uh, paper into size you have this kind of uh, leftover and don't throw it away you, you use it because it has the same material the, this is white I think okay this is why uh, we call white solar color so um, let me let me mount it see this has a folding this is the last uh, inch of the roll that comes with it, like this roll. It has this 49, and uh, after mounting, it will be flattened. You can see that, uh, this is a silicone, silicone mounting paper. It's a silicone uh, adhesive uh, film uh, with a release paper. Uh, you can put this uh, paper on uh, uh, regular. You know, like a backing paper, but you can also just mount this directly on the uh, uh, on the silk first, and then you can transfer it to, to any surface. So just like that. Right? I need to put something underneath it. Uh, usually a piece of uh, uh, fabric, but I use uh, felt. I only have felt here. Okay, uh, this is another <laughs> lesson because if you use the uh, uh, felt, what happens is the the uh, the silicone will stick on the felt uh, and cannot remove J silicone. Just something like the, like this gun, you know, it's very uh, okay annoying if you don't know how to deal with that. So I just keep it facing up. That's fine, and I will use a piece of. Uh, uh, any kind of paper. 
um, better yet. This is a silicon release paper, which is uh, the back backing paper uh, comes with the silicon. Okay, I used it already before. So this is a uh, uh, like a pastry patching paper, but, right? Uh, waxing paper. It's not sticky, so I can uh, put this on top, right? Um, so to mount the uh, silk, you can use traditional way like a paste, um, but it's more convenient to, with the uh, silicone paper because silicone paper is not um, penetrates into the silk, it doesn't change the texture of the surface. You can you can paint on the surface without a uh, problem, but with the other glue or paste, it might uh, change to make it too water resist. You cannot paint anymore. You, you, so you usually do wet mounting after the painting is done. So this is my testing. Also, I just I just showed you you know how to mount the silk to make it thicker. You can uh, you can make it even more flat uh, by put you know release this backing paper and iron iron again onto a board a um, foam board or mat or just a regular heavy uh, 300 pound paper or 140 pound paper so this is my testing piece for coloring okay so I'm going to um, Get some color going here. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's put it here. Okay, I think this uh, should be dry enough. If not, let me just uh, make sure it dries one more time. Okay, this this light uh, light blueish color is uh, colorless. Actually, when I uh, rub it off, you can use finger or use a special rubber actually um, to remove it later. But for now, we we have preserved the the color of the silk uh, before we do the, the background wash. <laughs> to do a smooth background wash on silk, remember to avoid uh, water puddle and you have to do this you can dampen the paper uh, first and uh, wait it to dry at a certain point when still damp but not fully like shiny so it get, give you some room and then when you, when you wash it it will be the smoothest but um, to make it to save time, I'll just wait uh, wet the area where I want the the edge to be soft. Maybe you know, just the, the white area. Maybe that's what uh, I usually keep it fully soaked. I uh, mean, wet. Let me just wet the whole thing. The classic way. Okay, you, you just uh, wet wet the whole thing, and then you you wait for maybe a couple minutes until it loses the shininess, and then you you do the color wash on the dampened surface. This will avoid stroke traces and even this. Uh, I think it's the same thing on on uh, hot press or cold press watercolor paper. The same idea. You when you want to create an even background wash, or it's not even. Actually, I want to create some kind of transition from uh, one color to that another, something like that. 
So let's let's say if we want to do a green yellowish. Okay, this is Marie's color. I mean, I think um, most of you maybe use you, you have the Marie's color. You can use Marie color. We have uh, some new colors like uh, this. Uh, uh, what do you call the lemon yellow? That's very good. Uh, you can mix with uh, uh, thallo to get a very vibrant uh, greens. Uh, um, let me see. I should maybe should not mix the the Chinese color with the Western color, but uh, why not? Let me just do that. Okay, I got I got some blue, maybe thallo kind of. Blue, I think, or oh, they separate. Yeah, they tend to separate because the binding is uh, is different. So let us just uh, use the Western color here, because I have it handy. Let me just use one. I use this uh, uh, cool brand. Let me give you the box. Yeah, that, that, because this is a uh, this watercolor uh, class uh, uses uh, water watercolor. Uh, this brand is what I used for the uh, for the calendar project because it creates the the color vibrancy. You see that if I mix mix the Maris, the Chinese color with Western color, it tends to separate because the binding material they don't marry each other. They're not the same, so I have to I have to use the uh, same color. Okay, so I got some yellow here. Basically, it's all yellow and it's, uh, some brown, a little bit purple. That's uh, but for the background, I just use. Uh, okay, I do it here. Maybe you can see. I just hold it in the air. So. Yeah, the the paper tends to, to dry already. So I have to do it fast. Okay, let me let me uh, get some water here. The water dropper. Oops, no water here. <laughs> Sorry, that's uh, supposed to be water. Just use the brush. So you, you can make a lot of pens with this. So I, I mix my greens and uh, uh, make it make sure it's very thin, so it's not create any uh, grain uh, on on the silk. Um, the best way to make it uh, even is to apply more than one times. So don't try to do it in, in one time. Maybe you know uh, uh, at least two or three times at least. It could be nine times that according to the ancient uh, documentary. Uh, okay, so we we can go from. Uh, Top down, so I would add a little swimming pool color to the top, so a little more bluish, just like a sky. But uh, there's no sky, I think. So let's do right here. Let's see if I can. Uh, the goal is not to leave any puddle. Should I leave this uh, orange color for the tiger? I think so, probably. Otherwise, it would be not so orange. But if it's very light, I think we can, because it's in the background, let's just do this. It just, because it's almost like just water. The silk really shows the color. You know, the 
much uh, more sensitive to colors. So make sure the color is very light when you paint on silk. Very light. It, it, it really nice feel. Okay. Because I'm a painter, I'm not really a procedural painter, you know, they, they like a, um, at this point you should not really worry about the shapes, right? But in procedural painting, yeah, you, that's what, uh, you just worry about the evenness of this, this background, this tone, just tone the paper into a green. Um, however, I, I think later on, right now, I'm going to vary this. Uh, okay, and you can you can lift. I forgot this. Remember, this is the snow ground, so you can lift it. You can lift it to the tissue. <coughs> okay, to preserve that, and then uh, a little bit more uh, yellow or ochre color. To, uh, from the, the ground. Okay, that would be nice. Uh, so let me just to add some orange color. I started to introduce the tiger color. It should be uh, echoing the top. Let me blot it. Okay, another nice thing about size silk is like you can blot it, partially uh, remove it. Not completely, but uh, you can remove it. Yeah. And then uh, do a gradation from the bottom up, the warm kind of color here. Yeah, I, I tried to save some uh, unpainted white. Try to save that. You cannot really remove it with the absorbent paper, but um, a size shown may, may also let you do this a little bit. Uh, okay, and you can have some uh, uh, burnt sienna even on this corner. Okay, so just a little warm near the, the foreground. Okay, just prepare a little bit. Okay, the the top the corner has a little bit. Uh, uh, Orange color, this uh, yellow. Let's just do very vibrant color. Then we can mute it if you need it. Uh, however, uh, this is another, you know, issue. Uh, we if we want to save the stripe, the other the branches, we may let it dry and then create some masking to preserve the the greens, and then we do the oranges without. Uh, Negative painting those uh, between you know uh, the branches, right? So uh, let's wait and let's see. What what, what uh, forget about the tiger for now. Just to, yeah, let me remove that. So we have to let it dry because uh, not really. And you can pull paints around. You can remove paints on silk. It will not uh, tear the surface. Okay, so uh, try to, to think about the negative shape and even negative shape. Okay. And you can paint with the tissue if you, you want, yes, just to scratch some, some warm color or something. But don't um, work too hard. Just stamping a little bit maybe. if you want some texture or some kind of. So let it dry. It, it creates a nice atmosphere. I can see in the in the in the reflection. You can see the surface reflected some kind of a strange pattern. I don't see it here, but uh, at some angle you can see that. But it, the color actually is pretty strong, much a little bit stronger than what you see it in the in the uh, video. Okay, so just let it dry. And uh, I would apply darker colors uh, uh, to
continue. This is the lightest background wash. Um, let's see, could we can have some warm steps. Some golden, uh, uh, golden green, or I think just uh, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre here. A bit more. Gradually going up. Okay, remember the, the trick of the two brush I mentioned earlier. So the, the, that's the uh, the second brush usually is a, a mixed hair brush like this one. It has the stiff core, which is more powerful than uh, a pure uh, goat hair brush like this this little one. If I need uh, to use for small areas, and then. Um, you don't paint the whole area with a single color because uh, you use a clean brush to soften the edge like that. Just to, to soft the edge. This is a, like a sponge. It, it, it absorbs, it takes the, the extra paints away or sp spread it. Spread it. Okay. Okay. Um, actually, it's okay to 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 dry it with a hair dryer. I think. If you use the same kind of uh, color one more time, you'll make it even more uh, even. To you know, uh, if you want a really even toned paper, but uh, uh, I'm a painter. I don't really care about that. Uh, some unevenness is more artistic for me. If I I know where it uh, should be. So um, next, I will do the medium color, just to. Uh, to, uh, let me see if it's time to do the leaves or just the stalks. Maybe we can do a little bit uh, 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 dark leaves overlapping with the, 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 uh, the light ones on top, like a shady part. And <coughs> so this, this paint will be much thicker than the, the first one, right? So you add a little water, but mostly, um, let me see what color it would be. It's still yellow on the yellow side. So you, yeah, I think the best is to, to get a, a yellow and a phthalo, and then add a little bit of a red, reddish uh, color. It could be this, this uh, little bit golden yellow, or you can just add brown to it. This is a cute um, gold. Conacron, what is the term? I just call it cute gold color. It's a new color. This, this uh, brand has all the strange names. I can never remember. But they, you know, they don't appear in other brands. OK. Um, besides, you, you mix your own colors. It's not out of the tube. You have to just see what you need. So if you want to make it uh, more brown, I need to just make it a little here. You can add, you can have a darker one to start with. So let me just do this shady area, really dark. You can see why I want to uh, show you the, the convenience of uh, using uh, masking. I don't have to worry the uh, uh, it covers the the light because um, 
is protected with the masking through it. Yeah, the 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 Western artists will never do this. Uh, they just uh, uh, this is very calligraphic, very Eastern, I think. Okay. At first, I tried to do negative painting. So I I did this yellow first. Then I try to avoid it, paint it under um, behind it. Think the, it's a silver uh, challenge to do that. So I give up. <clears throat> you cannot really squeeze those in. You, know, you have to. Um, anyway, I can still paint uh, the background uh, after it dries. You know that's uh, that's okay. So I want to make sure it's dark enough so I don't have to go back because the, li the limitation of the, the, the class time. I cannot do too many, many that kind of force. What about um, I just do some you know bold stroke and then because I already have the texture there, so I don't need to spend time on all of them, just on this main group, maybe that's all I need. So this is the the focal area I need mean, to have more detail. And this is the uh, marginal area and you know, I just can do a wash like a, just like I did here, you know, I just did an even wash on this corner and then I removed the mask. Uh, masking through it, uh, and you will have the texture. Okay, let me see some more can here. So this area is pretty uh, shady, and it even got some. Uh, some uh, I'll just put some dirty color there. This kind of uh, texture is not going to be kind of uh, because it has this kind of uh, beads or uh, what do you call this, uh, puddling. Uh, but uh, that's okay with me. If you want to smooth that out, you have to use a dampened clean brush just to, but it will destroy this kind of um, natural texture, which I love personally. I just leave it. I just you, you you decide if something random have you know it's a happy accident, keep it. Uh, if if it's not, uh, you can you can just uh, use the clean brush to to change it. But so I don't need too much detail, otherwise be too busy, right? So this is the. And I, I I may start with a stiff stroke, and then I blur it, you know, with a, with the with either with the original color or just the water to to soften it, just to, to make it into a uh, a block shape, a, sh a shape that's more natural. So because we in in our uh, viewers. Uh, Psycho, you know, psych, psych, psycho. You you only need to define the uh, a few groups as bamboo. Don't spend time on every single part of the painting. Okay, that's uh, and I concentrate on the solid and the 
and uh, voids, you know, the the unpainted part, painted part. Okay, let, let's just do the um, the most difficult part, right? The the, the stems, uh, the stock. Okay. I'll start with this uh, uh, stand up, stand uh, stand alone one. That's uh, kind of my uh, what uh, in this painting. <coughs> okay, I use uh, a little bit um, pure lavender, or some purple color. Uh, you can mix blue and uh, azurian to get uh, ultramarine uh, and uh, this too. But this is in between the. Exact crimson and the uh, ultramarine, I think, is already made. And uh, I just use a little bit uh, burnt sienna, maybe, to make it a, a gray. And you can you can have a little bit uh, yellow if you want lighter. And don't blend it too even. So some part is more purplish. So it's a purplish. Wait, it's pretty warm, <clears throat> and you can charge it with other color like a uh, uh, green to change it later. But in this, it's a very brown, purplish color to to start with to, for the base. So um, you can start from the bottom up, which will make a gradation from uh, you know darker to light maybe. Or if you start from right in the middle. So it was soft on, on both sides. That, that's also okay. Um, let me try my luck. Maybe. So I will vary the sections here. Uh, you don't you don't paint the uh, bamboo with a uh, curve between two joints. So let's just do uh, one section at a time. So this one should be uh, pretty close to the edge to start with. Okay, not right here actually. So you can you can, you can just do oh, it's a, so it's slightly bent to the left or not? Maybe not. It's pretty straight up now. Okay. So just like that to introduce. Oh the light effect uh, I'm not sure it's from the top or left. So, but here I got the light on the, I mean dark on this uh, left side, is which is for convenience. But one side is darker than the other, it's fine. As long as uh, you have some dark and light variation. Just like a, you paint freestyle. So I, I'll just do freestyle paintings, like a, on, on raw paper. Then the section goes straight at a slant. Oh, this is a little too light. Like that, a little bit. And what do I do? I, I go from the top down to do this dark part. Okay, now this is a, this has a shadow, so that's it's good to have to go um, to go slow, you know, to go light. Then you can. You can add to it, okay. And try to keep the calligraphy, but it's not same as the, the shei, the um, freestyle. You don't you don't have room to uh, to change. I can still uh, add to it, but don't do it right away because uh, it will create a puddle. So let it dry, and then you can uh, dry a little bit at least. So this one goes continually up to this, uh, not in the middle. Not in the middle. If I go straight, it will be right in the middle. That's a very common, very common mistake. So I change the direction. I go up. It's really um, the principle, abstract design is more important than concrete. Um, what what is you know? If you make uh, something like it right in the middle. Set, you know, equals um, or symmetrical, it will, no matter what it represents, it will be ugly, not beautiful. So just be sure to avoid that kind of 
mistake. So if you want, um, you can still you can try to charge it with green. So when I try to to change, I make a a different color, a tonal change or a a, a hue change. So it could be something like that. Now you can you can use double brush technique. Just use a uh, let's just use this one. It's another mix uh, hair brush. Let me see. Uh, oh, this one. Where's my mix hair? Oh, here. Yes. Yeah, it's the uh, stiff and soft combination brush I, I use on this hand. So that's the, the brush I will use. And I, I will let it dry a little bit, then do the glaze to change the color. I think it's a little easy. And, but if you want to blend in, you can you can uh, you can do that. Just make sure it's not uh, going too too uh, outside the stroke. You did. <laughs> so I I blend the color the two colors on the paper to get a gray green kind of. Just vary a little bit, uh, warm and cool. It would make a lot of difference. Uh, I, how time is? Forty minutes. Okay. Um, let me just use green here, but we do have want some brown in this foreground. So we'll just do this. This one goes straight up, like going outside of the frame. Uh, it can suggest a little bit up more straight so it will not uh, the angle is like a 15 degree or something like that okay <clears throat> and then I'll do this group you don't have to count each one as I said most important to avoid parallel lines or straight lines this one's too straight huh I was trying to avoid the exit point at the, at the, at the center so I may I, I may correct this a little bit. So it's all uh, design idea, you know, to avoid parallels, to avoid um, equalness. So let me just uh, um, yeah, some in the foreground, uh, some in the middle ground is thinner. Some in the back would be even more uh, green or blue yeah so this one could be in the middle There's some dirty color there the joints uh, or the sections are kind of um, shorter on the uh, near the ground that's the Okay. Okay, let's I try to make some crossing. Something like that. Try to blur that straightness. Break that break straightness. So I will start with a um, basic green here. Two red. You can go right across because uh, it will it will have some protection there, so you don't have to avoid. That's the advantage of the this uh, masking fluid. Okay, <coughs> now um, some dirty color and some pure color. I I just do my freestyle painting. There's a triangular shape here, right? It goes behind. So it should be a little bit dark. Uh, vary the shape of the the size of the 
the the level of the, the joints are, are different, right? Just like you do with ink. It's the thicker joints, and then a darker one behind the small one. Yes, you can. Um, you can squeeze out some shape just using the dark against the light. You know, so they help each other. Yin and yang contrast is more important than the light source contrast to uh, lighting. So I really have no idea the groove, the groove is, but I know the dark and light has to be alternating. That's all. That's more important than the, uh, the individual, the, the bamboo stock. So I just alternated the light and the dark. Okay. And you can do the, all the light first, actually. Maybe that's easy. Just, uh, but it, it must be a little bit different with each one to make it uh, not repeat. So if I do this one, uh, I, I look at the, the side, trying to make it uh, a little bit very so I could make a long one there. Just like that, maybe. I'm just going all the way down. A little bit of curve, but not too much. It's okay. Like that. And then go up. Oops. I missed. There's some dark there. <laughs> Okay, if you can do it. Okay, if I go down, I, I, I'm worried about the, the negative shape. So even though I have tendency to go down straight, I, I may make a sudden uh, change, and then I, I use some other uh, justification to, <laughs> to adjust that. You know, that, that's very common. So the, the, the negative shape is very important as important as the positive one so don't lose that just don't lose track on the negative and then and the negative shape just add a little leaf okay let me just do some corner ones here so this one is a little Kind of brownish, um, too brown. Just add a little dark. Go all the way here. And this dark. Oh, this is a parallel, huh? almost. Okay. Yeah, if you think too much, sometimes <laughs> you can use it. Just go with your your gut feel, um, and the, you know vary the the dance and the sparse. So this area is is uh, second dance. This is the main uh, dance area. So that's. Uh, Some dry um, leaves or something makes this corner pretty warm. Okay. Um, <laughs> This area, or oh, this uh, this main main uh, group is need to be finished. So 
Let me just use some really delicious green color to finish this top part. Oops, it's too green. You want to maybe you can mute yourself. I think your your utensils uh, making noise. I'll try to create some uh, freedom of uh, the calligraphic stroke. That's dirty color. I got some black here. Well, that's okay. I can have a little bit. It's a neutral tint. It's kind of black. We don't have black on this palette, but it's a neutral tint. I think. That's the darkest part. Maybe that's a little bit over. Almost like black. Okay. I think I'm, I'm I I exchanged the two brush. This one become a color brush. Let's, let's clean that. You can see this color is a little bit too too thick. That's why it's not so delicate anymore. Because I I I just try to paint fast. So I try to do it in one shot. That's not a uh, ideal speed to do with uh, the silk painting. You you need to go multiple times, ideally. Okay. <coughs> The, the here we don't have um, we don't have the uh, protection the the light for the light so uh, what we do is to do the light first and then we leave uh, light I think we can we can do a quick kind of wash And just identify a little bit edge uh, with the shape that will make the whole block looks like a leaf. And you know, still I'm creating this uh, little uh, holes of uh, unpainted negative space. That's very important. You can use the brown color to kind of paint some contour even to, to, to define the edges. Or you can use purple color. Oops. But make sure it's not getting thicker and thicker, right? The joints is a uh, it's a little stronger. So probably very little. Maybe you can change the the uh, this is too cool. You can add some brown to to just to break that. Change the temperature of that. Okay, and you can. Finish the the washes first, and then we'll do some uh, definition here. I need to let it dry before I can add those leaves. 
But remember, I said I want to preserve some uh, color uh, while I do the orange. So I can. Uh, oops, I forgot to use uh, my specialty brush. I just used my regular brush <coughs> for this gun. Uh, I have to wash it quickly, I think, before it gets dry. So I just do some uh, ab abstract pattern of uh, uh, either, you know, you think it's a stripe or bamboo, whatever, but I vary the, sh the distance a little bit, uh, angle a little bit, but mostly just the parallel lines of uh, white. I want to save. Okay. And then I just clean this brush before it destroy it. I think you, you cannot really wash it out. When you put it in the water, it just become uh, solid. So maybe you should rub it out. I think this brush is gone. It got some uh, residual on it. So this is really terrible stuff. Uh -oh. I cannot get it up. So I forgot using the soap. You can use soap still right now. Maybe that will help a little bit. Anyway, I'm not going to use any more, unfortunately. <coughs> okay, um, so wait that to dry before I wash the, the tiger color. And uh, I will I will finish some uh, some uh, uh, details here and there. Some uh, Henry, it's three o'clock. Okay. Yeah. It's three o'clock. We have thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Okay. Thank you for reminding. Okay. Okay, let's just uh, finish the the bamboo here. There's uh, some. Uh, okay. This is too uh, still damp. I cannot do. Uh, but what, what uh, dry part you can start to just paint directly with uh, some green, blue, or nice bamboo colors. And this part is a little bit too thick, maybe, I think it was. I just finished the detail on this top. Uh, if you want to soft, you just do it with dampened paper. And let it blur a bit, it's fine. Uh, still, you, you need to pay attention on the, the light and the dark, the shady part. So just make some part the lower part of a, a, brass, uh, a, a branch uh, darker and leave it and squeeze out the top of this dark I think will help. So I man mainly alternated the dark and the light to create a lighting effects as in what color we, we try to achieve. And some some shadows maybe on the branch, just like that. It's a grass style calligraphy. <laughs> You mean, uh, I mean, the, the fast writing style. If you can notice, uh, it just go with that. You paint fast. You start with a 
uh, standard script practicing, and then eventually you can you can do some cursive style or, or one stroke kind of um, style of calligraphy that helps to create rhythm. I add some ultramarine to the dark part. And uh, you can cover the uh, the dark with uh, pure yellow if you want still to create some some light. Right? Okay, <coughs> and this part uh, it has a little bit uh, branch I think behind uh, some gray some. Medium size. That is the direction it goes kind of in, in this direction. And okay, now um, the, the uh, silhouette of the uh, leaves. I think the blurry is fine. There's some dampened, uh, partially dampened paper here. Uh, lo looks like a freestyle painting. Yeah. In Shin is ex uh, exclusively Gongbi. Uh, you know, everything is under control. No bleed, no uh, fuzzy edges. It's decorative. But uh, we just borrow a little bit of that because uh, it could be a standalone wall hanging thing, not necessarily a pattern. But uh, if we do a pattern, you know, we need to make sure it's very neat. We can use computer to help generate the the pattern. I will show you in the next class uh, on Saturday. Okay. Um, and here we we have the I think it's dry enough probably not let me dry it quickly in a minute. Okay, <coughs> then we wash the background with uh, this brush is got with some uh, orange color. I got some aluminium here left over from the uh, other project, so let me just use that. And you can do with a light orange color wash. So when you repeat, you can see you create puddles. So that's uh, Maurice, it has some texture in there. Maurice is not friendly with the color. Okay, there we go. Just use the same color. And replace that. I think that's probably it. And uh, you can you can use you can just clean the same brush and then uh, uh, dry it a little bit to pour it to the to the to the grid edge. Okay, I'll just uh, bring them together. Some. Some white, we don't need so white, just to blend it. Okay, I'll just clean my palette. I'll just 
Bring my pallet to here. So less detail uh, in the background is preferred. Someone's leaving a message on my answering machine. And she didn't realize it's broadcasting live. <coughs> Sorry, uh, we have to answer that after the class. Okay, we have about less than ten minutes left, right? <coughs> All right. Um, let me try this area and then I'll like uh, we missed some details here. This area should be a little shaded. I just want to leave this area most uh, light. Okay. Now uh, I have a special rubber I can use to remove the the masking. Let me take that here. Let me just use my finger, see if that, that's okay. And you can see this, can you see that, can you see the shape of the, the leaves? We can just use the whole hand, do it fast, like that. Okay, some part is still um, wet, so that's not good, but uh, uh, we don't have time to really, you can, yeah, you should wet it completely dry, so it's not good. I, I will be careful not to rub into the area of the, the white, you know, just to, outside the, the paper, the silk. So, after this, what you can do is to uh, soften the edge with uh, uh, a hard brush with water, or um, you can glaze the, the, the white with a uh, uh, yellow, tender green kind of. So, this is what uh, I do. Just use a transparent color to. Um, you you may still have a little bit white. That's what I did. 
Or you can just go like this. Transparent. But uh, leave some white. It'd be nice. Just to on top of that. Just keep it thin, you know. That the principle of painting silk is to keep it thin. It, it's you know some part like here, I got puddle or beads because I painted too too thick. On silk, you can remove those marks by you know uh, just just like that, dampen it and then uh, blend it. So it's it's okay to on silk. That's why people like silk. It's more. Uh, forgiving and uh, easy to move paints around to lift to uh, uh, to do to use rubber. Huh. Never know that. Huh. I never know that. Nobody teach me that because the Chinese artists never use uh, masking fluid in gongbi painting. And that's a new uh, secret. Let's see. Just for you guys. I have the first luck here so because I never done something like this before, and uh, I think it's pretty uh, successful. And you can you can have a little bit yellow, more yellow to make it sunny, kind of feel. You can see how I, uh, when you work on the uh, edge, like hard or soft, you, you know you're near the end of uh, the game. Okay, <coughs> I will do a little bit accent um, on the, the uh, tiger, so make it a little bit believable. So you can just do. Few stripes. It's kind of delicate, so I use a smaller brush. Use medium uh, cadmium yellow with red to draw these lines. But you don't have to think about you know legs or or, or any particular body body parts. Just uh, uh, maybe I create a, uh, a sense like where is the head or something, uh, where is the front or where is the, the there, you, whatever you, you can suggest. Um, just do minimum, minimum uh, with this. But mostly, most important is the pattern, like the lens, the, the density, the sparsity is most, more important than. What what is re, what uh, that represent? Okay. Anyway, that's uh, that's what. Oh, don't forget the joints. The bamboo symbolic uh, symbolically has this uh, joint that in Chinese we call it jie. Jie means uh, what's this? Um, more moral uh, high moral standard or uh, morality. Uh, Jie means doesn't bend, doesn't bend uh, to evil or so abstract, abs uh, that kind of uh, uh, personal personality or traits. Uh, I think this this one this must they they, they want to say the acti uh, the um, energetic. Tiger, so uh, doesn't really matter now. We yes, bamboo also means uh, uh, safety, safety ping I right? so safety and security, security. In symbolism, in Chinese uh, decorative art, okay. Uh, next class will will introduce uh, some uh, great traditions of uh, pattern um, design, like uh, uh, Egypt uh, or Islamic 
uh, Chinese is one of the great traditions in, in, um, in terms of uh, uh, auspicious or symbolic pattern design, whereas uh, geometric uh, mathematic design in Islamic uh, Arabic uh, pattern design and uh, abstract of nature uh, elements in Egypt, Egyptian design. The Chinese emphasize on the symbolism. Or as, you know, everything has a symbol, uh, so that that uh, helped to inspire color, the, or the composition, or everything in, in fine art. Okay, that's it. Um, let me sign on the corner here. I use red. This is, this is a. Mostly green color. I will echo that uh, warm color on the on the upper corner. On this corner, I will just sign here. Oh, it was actually was uh, uh, published there, but I think maybe we do it opposite way right here. This is my uh, uh, Blue Heron Arts logo for the edge. Twenty-two. That's it. Uh, we can still, you know, work on a lot of uh, detail or the shading uh, to make it uh, more uh, pop. You you can make uh, some shady part even darker. I think. Just create more contrast with the with the blue and purple colors. Okay. Let me add a little bit branch here. Make it more pop to make this part really dense. Tend to over do things in the end. So be very careful. You should look at the painting from a um, distance, and it will tell you what what to do. Okay. Any questions? Um, we can open for for um, review, uh, critique session. If not. So this is on, on silk, uh, silk paper. Uh, I kind of like this this first uh, test still. Uh, I think that the bronze bronze branch looks really cool. Um, <coughs> change that a little bit. Let's do. Any uh, anybody want to show their art class? Open comments. 
Okay. Um, sorry, I, I can uh, I I'll remove my my. Uh, Henry, I I finalized the P region. Okay. Good. The your okay. your my good. I didn't finish it. I know. Uh, I just want to see the negative space you you created. Uh, that's good. Looks good. Um, that that uh, middle one, the, the gray one, it could be uh, a little further down, uh, outside the frame. Yeah, it comes uh, from outside the frame. You don't have to show the ground. Uh, on the oh, front. okay. I wasn't sure, so I left it to uh, add yeah. the ground later. Uh huh. Yeah, you, you can you can extend that all the way down to the bottom of the the. the uh, uh, I know the, the angle. And I didn't finish this yet. I. I... Uh -huh. Yeah, you can finish that. No problem. Um, yeah, just that that angle is a little bit uh, uh, hard. So. Yeah. Uh, I think the the section could be longer. That's the okay. You can end it there because it's uh, uh, near the bottom of the the plant. The the just the. the the joints is mm -hmm. cl closer than how can i correct this angle it, it, it's too angular I'm, right angular. yeah yeah you can use uh you can cover it with leaves oh, okay yeah gotcha okay thank you thank you okay let's go to the next person lynn siegel lynn okay um yeah your your uh, bamboo is a little bit too thick somehow so the leaf and the uh, stem proportion is a little bit uh, uh, problematic so if the bamboo is a little thinner it would be better but there is bamboo like uh, we see for construction purpose it's very thick like this in Hawaii also I've seen large but they come in larger leaves so the leaves could be larger, I think, to save that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, compositionally, I think the negative space is too even. You can have a little more like a dense and the con contrast with sparse. Sparsity and density could be a little stronger. Uh, I do like the great grouping of the leaves is good, but the edge could be a little bit uh, uh, Kind of jagged, you know, not not so rounded. The the leaves could stand out a little, bit, make it larger. Yeah, more pointed leaves, like the, the typical bamboo leaf, could sticking out out of the the group shape, the block. Yeah. Okay. Very very nice. Yeah. The dark and the light should be separate. So darker is dark, light is light. Not mixed in. Uh, I think you you have that uh, already, but uh, if you emphasize on that, it would be better even. Okay. The, okay. Um, we have. Uh, Laura. Okay, Laura. Laura. Okay, it's a little bit reflective. Um, it's hard to see. Oh, uh, there's a good. Okay, it's what's paper? You use the rice paper. Yes, rice paper. Yeah, it's a wrinkle, but it will be flattening after mounting. That's uh, normal. Um, it's sized uh, and sized, sized, right? I said my size. Okay. Yeah, I like the the bamboo uh, stock. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Uh huh. Very, very good uh, calligraphy. <laughs> the leaves are a little bit too small. Maybe a, uh, okay. or you can you can uh, make them into la large blocks. Paint it, paint it. Yes. Okay. Do you want the one? Okay. Um, you can make the leaves a little more integrated, but your individual group is good. Just make it stronger by um, combine many many of them because this is a. I, uh, it's supposed to be a scenic painting, so you you want to make a um, painting look more like a groove, not just a, a single uh, a few uh, branches. <laughs> your branches are really good. Shows you are training in, in sumier or Chinese brush painting well. Um, 
yeah, proportionally the leaves could be larger, I think. Okay. Yeah, or, or just to make it into larger blocks will help. Just like I said, there's different bamboo kinds. This is this is uh, this is okay. Um, yeah, uh, uh, so some some you know so some dance and some some sparse will, will help. The front the the left, right side could be a little dense. More. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The the more leaves could be a little more, and you can use dark leaves. You don't have to um, use since you're using rice paper. You don't have to paint the light effect. It's very hard to do that with the rice paper. So just do the classic way. Just use dark green with ink, maybe or a little ink uh, to cover the light stock would, would be nice. Just okay. the more classical way to do that. Yeah. Because uh, if you save the white, you have to use uh, mortar resist right, to use light. light. It, uh, negative painting is impossible. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, next uh, we have uh, Rosemary. Rosemary, you are on. Okay. Yes, I am. Um, I use mulberry paper. Oh, really? It, that's very nice. Uh, I almost cannot tell. Uh, I like the the, the distant uh, tiger color with the stripes uh, like bamboo in front. That's nice. Uh, yeah, the leaves. Uh, I, I like kind of like this little leaves. They really uh, lyrical. Very very nice. Uh, everything looks good. Yeah, I like the back lid effect. You kind of dark uh, against the light background. It, almost like snow in the back. Very nice, very good. Um, Thank you. I like it. And yeah, it's beautiful. Thanks, Rosemary. Okay, now we have uh, Benita. I think uh, I'm going to jump to Benita's. Okay, you have painted the wind. I can feel that that blow. That's good. The branch is a little bit too curvy, but even you know with the wind. Um, but I yeah, it's 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 very expressive. Uh, I kind of like that. I, I like the variation of the purple, different greens, and the dense and sparse. You got you got everything. Yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, beautiful. I I like the little. Uh, Little light against dark on your right side, that shows light pretty well. Uh, it could be, uh, I don't know how you get it, but if the shape is a little bit in the you know three stroke group classical way, it would be even better. But you, you definitely um, have got the contrast. Did you use uh, any uh, masking through it? Yes. Uh, you, I can't hear you. <laughs> you did. Anyway, well, well done. I, I like the background, the, the receipt uh, colors, uh, very subtle orange and the purple contrast. Beautiful. Okay. Very well done. Okay. Um, any other? Okay. M Megan, I see you have finished. Pretty amazing you, how, how you, you guys are following up. It's pretty challenge. I, I, I really like the uh, solid and the uh, sparse contrast. It's very uh, nice. I, I li like that. Yeah. Um, just uh, this V shape, maybe a little bit uh, breaking. You know, a little bit on the bottom, a little bit just uh, yeah, extend a little bit to the bottom, very light into the words. You don't have to go all the way to the frame, but. Uh, but don't uh, you also need to avoid the x so it's between y and x something like that <laughs> or, or, or k or something yeah it would be fine i i think everything looks fine really nice i like that um the 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 uh, tiger you could be spread a little bit maybe uh, uh, surrounded by a little what more, to do with that tiger uh, yeah a little green around it just to uh, blend it into the ultimate uh, the environment you know the common camouflage idea just uh, so the same value of green could be around the tiger 
So that okay. look, not white, so it's not to cut off, uh, you know, right. from the background. Uh, that that would be it. I think uh, some edges could be a little, just like you know, a little uh, too straight. Maybe just a few uh, leaves sticking out in the middle mm -hmm. part of the straight line will, will, will help, just to, mm -hmm. to break the evenness of the, the uh, that line. I think beautiful, very nice, mm -hmm. successful. Thank you. Space composition, very good. Okay, let me see. If any other? Uh, okay, let me see. The second page. Paul, I don't think there's a hand. There. Henry, can you see mine? Uh, let me try to find you. If you speak, maybe you will jump to the front. Okay, I see. Is that you? Is that too close or? Oh, I see. Too... Okay, see Ping. Yeah. Okay, I see. Um, it's a little too dark. Maybe you can go. go I mean, the, the light is is a little dim. You have light. Okay, uh, let me change your position. Sorry, uh, you can do that later. Maybe. Will this be better? Your 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 video is off. You need to turn on your video. Okay, now it's better. Yeah, I can see that better. Very good. Um, yeah, the, the green tend to be more bluish. Uh, it's like overcast. They're not uh, very, uh, you know, like sunny, like Southern California sun. So you, you may add some more lemon yellow, uh, kind of ye yellow green to the leaves. The, you, okay, the grouping of those uh, stems, uh, try to kind of, um, interlock them so you, you don't have to um, I think the dark one actually should try to make it behind would be the best but uh, so it's a little bit of finding between the the two the light and the dark it's a little bit finding who is in the front or the back so <laughs> maybe the best solution is just to hide them with leaves uh, to hide the dark with leaves make the Light Either the dark with the leaves? Uh, yeah, the, the dark tends to pop. I don't know uh, how to correct that. The the dark should be like in the in the gap between the lights. But you did the dark first, so the light cannot really hide it. It jumped to the point. But uh, one, another way is just to make it in the front. So you the brick you had uh, the the crossing uh, branch could be. You can you can just uh, make a hard cross h hide the light behind, so because that 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 brick really um, comes to um, you know grab too much attention in the composition. Um, that 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 cross that that gar gap. Okay, I, I think I found a good solution. You put more leaf instead of the light light stuck in front of the dark just put more leaves to to hide that gap or justify that You're, yeah you don't have to come connect the, put it to the yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah just put there more leaves yeah that will ha hide make this this gap a little obscure it, now okay. it's it, it just to, put leaves here just in the right? gap just between the, the to the between the brick you know the it, we yeah. Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right there. Just hide this with the leaves. That would that will help. I'm, I'm okay, sure. I have a question of your uh, masking fluid yes. and uh, the white ink, right? Yeah. So your masking fluid, I didn't rub it off yet. So oh. you put the masking fluid in the white on top of white ink or next to the white ink. White ink. Uh, what paper are you using? You, you painted it with the white ink, right? First, no, 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 no. That, that, that's on, on a different piece of paper. That was uh, I, I didn't finish that. So this the that's the uh, mulberry paper. I haven't touched that yet, but I I'll show you if you want to. Uh, so if you look at uh, okay, let me spotlight me. Uh, let me answer your question. Uh, by yeah, I, I was confused with uh, masking fluid okay, and okay, uh, okay. white ink. That's completely... So why you put there and why you uh -huh. put uh, on top of it, things like that. Okay, these are not uh, the same thing. They are two different uh, uh, 
techniques on okay. different paper, uh, completely different uh, method. Uh, one is uh, the, the, on the traditional paper. Can you see my? Okay, let me spotlight my. Okay, if, if you look at this one, okay, this this one is the mask, uh, the the masking, not masking the the transparent white is blended with the yellow. So I hope this will become uh, uh, resist. So if I if I wash this with a let's uh, say green, just put some green color or blue color. Let's just put the blue. And on the back, okay, just like that. Let me see. It will unveil the the, the color on the front. I think. Okay, that's for mulberry paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, you so if on you, the you, watercolor paper or your silk paper, you only I, put yeah, the I, masking I, I, fluid. Okay, right? the the idea is this. This is, is a this this is like a size. You 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 use it on unsized paper to make partial size. So you see that effect. Okay, this is on the front. This is on the front. So uh, you, I I colored the back. The the yellow is on the front with the masking, not masking with the transparent white white ink. White uh -huh. ink. So this is the effect we got. That's a good question. So uh, that complete the this experiment actually pretty well so you you can see how it works right i'll i'll complete this painting after the class and the post in the online classroom for everybody i post in my social media as as well for 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 the result okay for this test i don't have time to finish this one in the class sorry Okay. Okay. And so the masking fluid is for the same purpose, but on the different paper. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So okay. Look at look at the look, look at this. This is on silk, silk or watercolor paper. It's uh, very sturdy. It 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 could be masked, and you can remove with your finger without without tearing this tearing the surface like this. Right? You can you can you, you see this. This is even easier than. Uh, watercolor paper so this this is uh, what we call the uh, paper silk the, the new product uh, contemporary product really suitable for this so that's one of the reasons you would use this instead of uh, rice paper or si even sized paper cannot do this because sized paper will not allow you to rub it without uh, tearing the tearing the surface now you can see the uh, the white stripe, if I just color it with a little bit uh, blue, it will make it uh, uh, even you know, more natural. So you, you can just watch the whole thing, like here, with a little bit of gray, so to, to make it uh, blend in a little bit. And here you need to be a little bit uh, careful without uh, touching the, the, the oranges. So I just kind of color this white stripe with a little gray, a green color that looks like the bamboo stock anyway, bamboo stem. Yeah. Okay, do you, do you know what I mean? This is how I get it. Um, um, same thing on the uh, um, regular watercolor paper, I, I use the masking fluid or uh, gum. I think this makes more sense. The, it's the joint gum or masking gum. It's a it's a rubber. You cannot use on rice paper. Unfortunately, you can only use on on uh, card sized paper or silk. Okay. Any, thank you, Henry. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other? Oh, we still have a few hands there. Let me go quickly. So, um, Pia, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, better. Yeah, I can I'm see. A, I'm a beginning painter, so. Sorry. Right, 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 very, right, very right, right, nice. Uh, yeah, it's a more like a, a, a brush painting, but on on, on watercolor uh, pad, right? right. Uh, yeah, mixed media. 
Mixed media. Okay, uh, yeah, mixed media favorite. Good. Um, yeah, very, 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 very nice composition. The bamboo. Uh, com I like the stock uh, arrangement, and uh, uh, the leaves is a little, little, little bit grayish. So maybe uh, make it more saturated somehow will, will help to to bring out the, the vibrancy uh, a little bit more. Yeah. So yeah, just uh, put more yellow green to um, uh, just a wash maybe you already got some texture going very nice just to add a little saturation uh, on top of that just you know okay. a, a little bit to, uh, bring them together just like a green clouds a little bit uh, a little soft but a glaze I, I think you already have some that's that's nice yeah, yeah I wish those grays a little bit saturated would be good Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. okay thank you. I, I have uh, rose and uh, some hands up, but no no uh, video. So maybe a uh, ping is still uh, already finished. Rosemary. I think you already uh, we already did crit uh, critique on uh, on those uh, hands. So um, that's all I think for the critique section. Oh, we got more, Shirley. Okay, okay. Before we, Shirley, you just turn off your video. Can you turn on your video back on? Turn, turn back, turn on your video, please. Okay, you got it. Yeah. Oh, beautiful masking technique you did do with a uh, gum, right? Oh, on rice paper, on uh, uh watercolor paper. Okay, I see that that, that decorative edge. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You applied with a knife or something? <laughs> Very, no, just a brush. Uh, brush. Yeah, brush. Did, yeah, you have specialty brush without to worry about doing it because I no the one dollar brush. Oh, no, yeah, <laughs> I ru I ruined a couple brushes today. Oh, that's too bad. I, I would like to have more of this somehow in here to make it um, compositionally. It feels kind of busy. Um. Yeah, I I like that bottom one. Uh, you you can you can. It looks pretty oh. nice. Yeah, I I know what you mean. The yeah, you you could have something like that on top to echo uh, to make a uh, to anchor the painting. Yeah, the the need something like more definitive. I know what you mean. Just to, yeah, just to maybe uh, negative paint a little bit with dark. With some dark, with some, uh, you have a little bit of bluish dark there, but you can have some more to uh, negative paint the shape. Uh, yeah. On top, on top, like you point it on your uh, upper half, so that that will bring out yeah some some uh, yeah right, right this area especially that group that yeah yeah in the middle part that could be a what group in, a little bit in the center part yeah just above yeah that that's about it so that 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 would. You can have some more uh, shape just by painting the negative painting the the, the dark behind. <coughs> yeah, I really like the lighting effect. Very nice. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. And Henry, is the Shinwasuri class on Saturdays? No, uh, only one on Saturday. Then on Wednesdays, you can check the dates. In the, Wednesdays. Yeah. Oh, great. If you okay. register for when you register for the next Saturday class, there's a dates for the coming class, but not uh, the same registration. You have to do that again. But there's dates you can save for the uh, Wednesday class. So we have a week that uh, we will have overlapping class. I'll remind you um, when we have the last class on Tuesday. I'll I'll tell you <laughs> the, tomorrow we'll have a you know new class, so you will know. Okay. Thank you. Keep just keep uh, attending this class. You you'll be notified. I think you'll get a uh, new registration for the Wednesday class when when we're ready. We're not. Uh, I'm still um, deciding on syllabus. You know what to, to paint. Still, um, give me some time. Thank you for your patience. I'm mm -hmm. a I'm a student in that area myself. Yeah. Okay. Um,
So please uh, register for Saturday class and we'll do more Shinovasari uh, painting um, for Earth Day theme of uh, pollinators and the white flowers. Okay, see you. Oh, thank you, Henry. Thank you. Oops. Uh, hold on. Let me see. Yong Le, are you there? Can you uh, stop the meeting? I think Yong Le is in a meeting or some. So maybe uh, Wiki can help. To sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, I was in a in a phone call. Sorry, what was the question? Oh, I was not. Uh, we, I think we are done today. Okay, thank you so much. And this is over time. I'm so sorry. Okay, so um, the Shinwasuri painting is this Saturday, two o'clock New York time. Additional sessions will be on Wednesday, starting from May fourth, I believe, all Wednesday through June. Okay, registration for this Saturday will um, basically uh, register you for the Wednesday session also. Oh, uh, okay. No, no, no. What's the time for Wednesday? Is the same time as this one? Wednesday, I believe, is two o'clock. Also, let me let me see. I'm sorry. Um, I'm doing wonderful things right now. Sorry. That's okay. Wednesday we're, we're, we're... is two thirty to four thirty. Okay. Two thirty to four thirty Eastern time because uh, children, we have uh, junior high school children get off from school at two thirty. Mm -hmm. So possibly some junior high school children might uh, join. Oh. That was the reason. It will start at two thirty. Mm -hmm. This Saturday is two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Sorry, I was not attending to you at the last minute. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, we'll see you next week. See you. Okay, bye-bye. See you on Saturday. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.